Welcome back to the 2023 YAR Summer Series. Our names are Annalise and Amelia. In today's video, we will dive into our efforts to advocate for legislation to create a Rare Disease Advisory Council in Indiana and provide tips for getting started. Let's start by rewinding to fall 2022. We were two college students living with rare diseases and were relatively new to advocacy, but passionate all the same. During the YAR Leadership Academy, we learned about Rare Disease Advisory Councils, or RDACs. If you aren't familiar with RDACs, now would be a great time to pause this video and watch the previous YAR Summer Series video introducing what an RDAC is. We were inspired by the potential to unify the voice of rare disease stakeholders and really make a difference at the state policy level. We began to wonder, did Indiana, where we live, have one? What work were they doing? Unfortunately, we quickly hit a dead end. There was no RDAC in Indiana. That's when we first had the idea. We were going to be the ones to make it happen. We started by learning from the experts. We set up a phone call with Swapna Kakani, who had spoken at the YAR Leadership Academy about her advocacy in Alabama, and her colleague, Tara Britt. Their piece of advice, start with coalition building. We listed out the stakeholders we knew of in Indiana, from the Newborn Screening Lab and Biosciences Institute to other advocates we knew of in the state, and began making calls and sending emails to get people on board. We learned that three bills related to rare disease advisory councils were being introduced in the 2023 Indiana legislative session, so we kicked our efforts into gear. While we had envisioned taking the year to build a strong coalition before moving to legislative efforts in 2024, with legislation on the table, we wanted to capitalize upon the opportunity. It was a whirlwind process, given that Indiana's legislative session is short, and there were several bumps in the road. But with the support of lobbyist Lou Belch, we got it done. Although the bills had already been introduced, there was a lot that needed to be accomplished to get them passed, as they had no significant backing aside from the pharmaceutical companies that had pushed for them to be introduced. Knowing that there wasn't a strong backing of rare disease advocates, we took the lead, bringing in the coalition of advocates that we had formed. The first hurdle was to get legislation heard in committee. Given Indiana's short legislative timeline, we had about four weeks to get this done. Looking back, it is hard to say exactly how we managed to accomplish this amidst busy school and activity schedules, but we did. Here are some of the steps we took on our journey to get this legislation passed. First, we knew that community support was critical to getting the bill passed. Legislators want to hear from their constituents. We worked with NORD and RDLA to facilitate both organizations sending out action alerts to advocates in Indiana so that they could write a message in support of their bill at different stages in the process. Second, you need to find a legislator who will sponsor or champion the bill and push for its passage among their colleagues. Once we had met with several legislators, we worked with other people involved in the effort to select which of the three RDAC bills had the highest chance for success under which legislative sponsor. Some things to look for in a champion are connection to the community, passion for the topic, availability and willingness to do so, and resources to dedicate to getting it passed. Once the bill was scheduled to be heard in committee, we prepared to testify to ensure that the voting members understood the impact of the bill on the patient community. In our case, we testified first in the House and then the Senate Health Committees in the Indiana State Legislature. Although it was nerve-wracking to stand in front of an audience of legislators, it was very worthwhile and rewarding. Each of us spoke for about two to three minutes in each session, telling our story, relating it back to the importance of this bill, and asking for their support. The legislators were clearly impressed to hear young adults speaking on the issue, and the bill was successful in both committees, passing unanimously each time. Finally, getting the support of the public was important as well. We wrote an op-ed on our rare disease journey and the importance of a rare disease advisory council in Indiana, and submitted it to various media outlets across the state to get the word out. Although it wasn't published in every newspaper we submitted it to, it was published in several different significant newspapers across the state, and we were invited for a TV interview with the local news outlet. There was no roadmap for us in figuring out what to do and how best to go about it, but we found our own path through the support of others who walked before us, including those who had advocated for RDACs in other states and lobbyists who were more familiar with our specific legislature, and through our own tenacity. We would not back down, and ultimately, we were able to get it done. Although your path in state advocacy will look different than ours, we hope this gives you an idea of some of the avenues you can try. Remember that each state is unique with different current legislation, compositions, and resources. 
Each success story has its own path with its own hurdles. Don't forget that if you have any questions, both Every Life and RDLA have great resources for state advocacy. Good luck and thank you for listening.